Most people planning a trip to Serbia are so excited to visit the sexy, happening capital city of Belgrade, Serbia, full of bars and nightlife with that city that never sleeps vibe, the most welcoming locals, plenty of restaurants with yummy food, historic districts, beautiful pedestrian streets, and so much history. But if maybe you're coming to Serbia for a longer period of time and you want to check out some other cool cities that you might want to base yourself in or spend an extended period of time in, then this video is for you. I'm going to share five amazing cities that aren't Belgrade. But first, if you're brand new here, my name is Wando. I'm an American girl who's been traveling in the Balkans since 2015 and 2017. I moved here working remotely from Belgrade, Serbia. Since 2021, I'm kind of all over the place. I don't live in any one place. Sometimes I'm in Serbia, sometimes I'm in Croatia, sometimes I'm in Macedonia. Right now, I'm in Montenegro. So if you are planning a trip to the Balkans or you're also interested in living here too, be sure to subscribe and have a look around my channel. Okay, I did. Smederevo. Smederevo is a beautiful, picturesque little city of around 60,000 inhabitants that's about an hour's driving east away from Belgrade. It's famous for being the last capital of medieval Serbia during the 15th century under the rule of the Serbian despot, Juraj Branković. It's also famous for its massive fortress, also built during the 15th century, which is one of the most well-preserved fortresses in the Balkans. It's incredible. You feel like you're on a film set when you're standing in the court inside of the fortress. That's how well maintained it is. Smederev is also known for its large central temple, St. George, as well as historical sites and that beautiful view of the Danube River. Logistically, it's a perfect mix of being a smaller city that's less busy, less hustle and bustle, but is also just in a great location. That's because it's so close to Belgrade. If you, for whatever reason, are in a rush to get back to Belgrade, maybe for a flight, maybe catch a bus somewhere else, um, but it's also the beginning of all of these amazing sites as you go eastward in Serbia, like the Jerdap Gorge, like Haram Porches, the beautiful, famous Golubats. Oh my God. So many amazing day trips in Eastern Serbia. I have a separate video about this, so you can check that out in the description. So ultimately, Smerarevo is a great base. If you don't want to be too far from Belgrade, but you want to be in a cool, unique, city that's also close to a lot of amazing day trips in the east. Kraljevo. Kraljevo, which is known as the heart of Shumadia, a geographical region in the center of Serbia, is so beautiful as it's surrounded by the mountains and it's got a smaller population of around 70,000. It's so charming and cozy and it has so many cool, unique nearby nature excursions into the mountains, like the nearby fortress Moglic, which is about 25-ish uh, minutes driving. It's a very cheap taxi ride over to that fortress, and maybe about $15. It's also surrounded by nearby spas like Vrnjačka and Maruška with rejuvenating mineral waters and spa treatments. I'm actually thinking of basing myself in Kraljevo when I go back to Serbia in about a month because of its amazing central location. If you're someone like me who's relying on public transportation, Kraljevo is such a great link to the north, the west, the south, the east. And besides Belgrade, it's the only city that I've found that has reliable um, bus transfers, transportation to other uh, bus stations in all various different parts of Serbia. So Kraljevo is great for people who are looking for a centrally located, low-key base, with lots of beautiful nature and just tons of weekend excursions. Novi Sad. With a population of around 300,000 people, Novi Sad is the second largest city in Serbia after Belgrade. And it's part of Serbia's northern region, which is called Vojvodina an autonomous province known for its Austro-Hungarian architecture as it was subject to long periods of Habsburg and Hungarian rule. So that's why compared to Belgrade, it has more of a slow paced vibe. It's more chill and relaxed where Belgrade's more of hustle bustle. And it's definitely got that central 
Europe vibe of Austria, Czech Republic, Slovakia, Slovenia. So if you're a big fan of a Central Europe vibe, you will love Novi Sad. Novi Sad is also known for being a college town. There's many universities there and so many of Serbia's youth all throughout the country flock to Novi Sad for university. Now, if I'm being completely honest, I don't love the Central Europe vibe <laughs> as much as I do kind of the rest of Serbia. Also, sometimes I feel like I'm walking on a college campus when I'm in Novi Sad. And as an old lady in my 30s, that just feels kind of weird sometimes. <laughs> but I've yet to meet a single person that doesn't love Novi Sad, so my opinion doesn't really matter. But some of the reasons that I will stay in Novi Sad for maybe a month or two when I'm in Serbia is because it is a very well curated, clean city, great city planning, lots of wide streets. It's so many great pedestrian zones for walking. It's great for biking. There's so many routes for running and I've still yet to see a cockroach in any apartment that I rented there. So that's a big plus. And then I also just love the location of Novi Sad. It's very close to the Croatian border. If you need to dip into Croatia really quickly, it's close to Hungary. But if you need to hurry back to Belgrade, it's only about an hour away from Belgrade. I think less if you're a really fast driver, which I am <laughs> when I went to car. But I digress. Um, it's so easy to get back to Belgrade really quickly. So Novi Sad is a great place if you wanna break from kind of that hustle bustle vibe of Belgrade to a slower paced vibe that you get in the Vojvodina region but still be based in an actual city where you can find lots of amenities and stores and the conveniences that you need. Užice. Užice is a western city in Serbia with a population of around 60,000. I know that might sound small, but it packs a punch with so much natural beauty. It is in this western mountainous region, so many beautiful red rooftops on the rolling hills that sit along the Dietinja River. Now for you go nostalgic history nerds, Užice is a really unique city. In the 1940s, it was renamed Titovo Užice to pay respect to the former Yugoslav leader, Josip Broz Tito, who put a lot of financial investment into the city after it was occupied by the Nazis in World War II. But after the fall of Yugoslavia, it went back to just being Užice. Another hallmark of Užice that you go nostalgic history nerds will find is some really unique brutalism architecture. Most notably, the Hotel Zlatibor. Užice also has so much natural beauty. It has a beautiful fortress that overlooks the city. It has waterfalls. It has a long um, canyon, great for biking, for walking, for running. If you're someone that's into adventure and thrill sinking, there's zip lining, there's rock climbing, canyoning, hiking. I'm sure I'm missing so many other stuff. <laughs> so Užice is just a great city for that person that loves a bit of everything. History, culture, nature, you name it. Niche. So, I'm not gonna lie, Niche is my favorite city on this list. <laughs> so much so that I made a whole separate video about why when I'm in Serbia, I face myself in Niche. And I'll link to that video above in the cards and also in the description below. According to Serbia.com, Niš, which is located in the south of Serbia, has a population of 250,000 people. That's perfect for people like me who like a city or a town where there's not too many people and there's too much going on and there's like information overload, but also don't like a place that's too small to the point where there's nothing to do. Who wants that? So it's a cozy little city that's still quite happening, uh, full of beautiful pedestrian streets, bridges, waterways, with a backdrop of glorious mountains and some of Serbia's most famous peaks. Now my favorite thing about Niš, unlike typical Southeastern Europe and Balkan cities that have amazing nature but they're quite small, um, like Kraljevo, like Užice that I mentioned before, Niš also offers a lot of that beautiful nature and those weekend nature excursions that you'll probably want to take, 
on top of being an actual city with a lot of the conveniences, big retail shops that you need last minute, you can just find and get a lot of what you need there for the most part. The city also has quick access to some really beautiful nature sites like Nishkabanya, that's where I would go to play tennis. I've never played tennis in a more beautiful place in my life. There's the Sichabo town, it's only about 15 minutes away. And for the more serious nature people, there's the Suva Planina, which has one of the most beautiful mountain peaks that you can see pretty much from anywhere in the city. And even if you just stick to the center of the city, every time you leave your door, there's just so much splendor. There's a well-preserved Ottoman fortress in the center of the city where there's also a park there that's well. There's lots of restaurants there. The Niche Jazz Festival takes place there. Wherever you go, there's a lovely sight of all these beautiful homes on the hills. The city is lively with bars, nightclubs, so many yummy, yummy restaurants, festivals. And what I also love about it is that it's got that, you know, Balkan, South Serbia flair of randomness. <laughs> like you'll just be walking home drunk at night from going out to a bar with your friends and there's just like a trubacha band playing and like random people just like gathered near the bridge and just it's just such a fun city. Niche also has an airport you can find some cheap flights to and from Niche and it's close to Macedonia and Bulgaria you can do a road trip to Greece and lastly if you're a Slavic language nerd Niche is in the south and like every country the south is always a little bit more different than it is in the north right and so you'll notice shifts in dialect and sentence structures and slang when you go to niche and all of that is fun as well so niche is just the best of both worlds if you're someone who likes your conveniences that you find in a bigger city but you still want to go to a place where there's nature and mountains and lots of excursions for the weekends that you have quick access to niche is your guy now there's so many other amazing cities in serbia that i've been to so you know i can make a follow-up to this video um five more great Serbian cities <laughs> but in the meantime I'll just link to my Serbia travel videos playlist in the description and if you're traveling to Serbia and you have any questions feel free to ask me in the comments below and I'll see you in the next one